year. Crappy Christmas. Crappy two weeks off. <laughs> this New Year sucked. This Christmas season sucked. What did you do? Please tell me at Rivertalk PGH. You can give us a call at 412 407 2744 412 pgh I had a terrible, terrible holiday season, and I'm hoping yours was better than mine. Let me know what you did. You want to know what I did? I worked. I worked 24 hours between Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and Christmas Eve was going into a three-day weekend. And we had three days to get the job done, because there was nothing going out. And the head supervisor of the overnight shift said, tell them their Christmas help. Christmas is cancelled. So that's what I had to deal with. In case you're uh, a first timer, I'm Brian Crawford. I am the master of the Millville Shore, Pittsburgh's Moral Compass here at the beautiful Millville Studios right on North Avenue in Millville, Pennsylvania. And as I said in the beginning of the show, you can get us at 412-407-2744 or on Twitter at RiverTalkPGH. To my right, we have Mr. John Delano. How are you today? Hey, Brian. Doing great. Happy New Year to you, even though it sucked. It sucked. You know what? The, <laughs> despite all of the people who died, all of the people who croaked in 2016, it was a great year for me, personally. And, but the uh, last week was not. No, the last, you know, it ended on a sore note, but uh, that's what you get yeah. in my job, and I, I guarantee you next year well, I work too. I will be off. You I, wor I work okay. Monday through Friday. Uh, today is a Monday. It's a, an observed holiday, but I'm yes. working. That's why I'm dressed like this. Yeah. I, I can't be in jeans like you. I mean, I wish I could be comfortable. But When you're the boss, you can do whatever you want. You are the boss, and I sure ain't. <laughs> <laughs> but a Happy New Year anyways. Thank you. Yeah, now, here's hoping 2017 is a lot better for you than uh, well, at, at least, least the, end the end of 2016. Yeah. 2016 was actually, uh, everyone's going on in they're groaning and whining and making all the, the sad yeah. faces because they say that 2016 was so terrible. It was it was probably one of the best years of my life, to be honest. And You're I speaking on a personal on level. A personal You're not level. talking yeah. political or sports. No, or no, just on a personal like level, a per just to right. see the success of this network and realize that, that or I, I always knew that it could turn into something, but see it begin to turn into something that could really prosper and right. uh, be turned into a career right. down well, the road. Well, I've, I've enjoyed following your career. Thank you. I remember yeah, way back when, when you were still trying to figure out a name for this place. John, the yeah. River's Edge. The River's Edge. And where did that come from? John Delano. Right yeah, here, thank you. KDKA. Thank you. I'll take credit. Came, up, came up with the name The River's Edge. I'll take credit for that. And <laughs> another interesting factoid is John Delano was actually on my first radio broadcast, I believe, out at Cal U. That, oh, that, wow. that was a long time ago. That was, yeah. A long time ago. But he was on my first radio broadcast, so uh, it's our first time back after two weeks yeah, off. So I get to be in your beautiful that. new studios, yeah, or sort of new studios. Wonderful, I, yeah. You, know, you didn't see, you were never in the old studio. Our old studio was in a closet in an attic, uh, and it was really awful. Uh, uh, so. And you even have this beautiful producer. Tara hi. Molesworth, across the table from me. Tara, hi, Tara. Hi, everybody. Hello. How was your new year, Tara? Uh, it was good. I fell asleep, actually, before <laughs> <laughs> the ball dropped. Did no, you? that's not I allowed. Did. That's awful. You're way too young it was for really, that. It felt really good, though. <laughs> that's terrible. See, that's that makes me sad, because New Year's is I my, my all-time favorite holiday. Oh, I hate it. You hate it, really? I do not like New Year's Why Eve. Why don't you like I New think, Year's Eve? I just think it's, it's to me, it's it's an excuse to go drinking. Okay. <laughs> to me, you know, and maybe that's a good excuse. thing. It's more, you know, and I, and I, from my standpoint, we go to a party. Yeah, thank you. You look great. <laughs> Am I supposed to put? Uh, yeah, we got a hat. We got hats. Does that? Oh, I don't even good. know. That, does that hair. show up? I don't know. Does you it know. show up in the camera? <laughs> yes, it shows up. That even gave me, you know. Thanks to Brian. I broke it. Look at that. How's that See, work? That's does great. That, I, I like know. it. I like I'll it. Tell you. John Delano sporting the uh, New Year's cheer. He's being a good sport despite you, hating this holiday. You know, I, I don't like the it? holiday. I uh, Frankly, we do go out to a party. We have a okay. traditional party we've gone to. But my uh, wife and I always come home about an hour, 30 minutes before midnight so that we can do our own little thing okay. at midnight. Which is, I mean, that's, that's that yeah, means that's at least. Tradition. Sure. We have a tradition. Yeah. You know, raspberries. Uh, what do you do, do you with do? raspberries? You put them in the champagne. Ooh, oh, yum. It really makes that those raspberries taste great. Really? Man, I'll tell you. I'll have to try that. I've yeah, never give tried it a try. that before. Yeah. That'll, that'll elevate your, your next New Year's Eve. <laughs> well, my next party, I mean, I used to throw a party. I was telling Tara before we went on air. These came from uh, previous parties. They were unused, so, so mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about blowing on them. But they were unused party <laughs> supplies. But 
I used to throw a party where I would spend like uh, literally like three hundred dollars on this party for like under ten people to come and celebrate because it's it's my favorite holiday of the year. It's it's the one day a year where all people of all backgrounds and all races come together to celebrate the death of the old year, and I think that's a wonderful thing. You know, Christmas you have so many miserable, angry, bitter people. Yeah. You've got like the people who. The, the housewives who will trample over a homeless man on their way to buy a TV, but on New Year's you don't get any of that. You know, you're you're buying the homeless. Well, there are a lot of people shot. who don't who don't celebrate New Year's Eve. I mean, well, we know wrong. people. I know plenty of people like Tara who fall asleep. Yeah, just you know, another day. It's just That's another terrible. day. It's not something. No, it's something magical. So, it's special. I mean, you're you... making it universal, and I don't think it is universal. I think there are plenty of people. And the other thing is mm -hmm. that that it obviously depends on time zone. Well, sure. Each and so people are years. celebrating it 24 times. Isn't that awesome? You know, that is I, cool. I was once on a flight. This is a true story. I was okay. once on a flight New Year's Eve to China. This is years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, every, <laughs> the thing is that when you go that direction, it'll, you lose a day, but you're also going back in time, yes. so to speak. And, and then you would come forward again. And so what happened was that we had multiple New Year's celebrations. That we fantastic. would hit midnight, and then we'd hit midnight, and then we'd hit midnight again, and then we'd hit midnight again, and eventually we landed, and it was midnight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, I would, you, I would, you would, I would like die. something like that. If oh, you want to celebrate New Year's yes. Eve, you can do it multiple times <clears throat> on the same night. I, would, I need to do that, because New Year's was always my favorite holiday, even as a child. See, to me, it's not about drinking necessarily, even though if you're 21, you definitely want to partake i don't but... think you have to be 21 yeah, I, I think, think so. uh, i think we uh, know a few others sure younger sure and i suspect but you too participated actually i in... didn't really drink that much until i mean I, I did drink underage but i really didn't i wasn't a big drinker in high school yeah. it wasn't until about my second year of college when i started drinking right and i really didn't... well i think that's it i think college for most folks yeah um high school for some College mm. from us. Of course, I can't. You I don't know what today's generation is doing. You're closer to it uh, than I am. Today's generation, they're all into heroin and things. Uh, it got, uh, it's gotten bad. Uh, that's, no, that wasn't not, a thing when I was in school. Not good. No, not good. Uh, I remember uh, being in school and someone handed me a joint, or they, they showed me a joint, and I... And to me, that was like, oh my God, that's, you got you got marijuana that's hard. In here, and now hard these drugs. kids are just like kind of looking at you know weed like, uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, it's legal in a bunch of states, and yeah. even more states beginning, uh, I guess, this new year. Yeah, isn't it now legal in yeah, a weed couple of states? Yeah, in the states where they uh, passed weed legislation, weed actually outperformed both of the uh, major candidates for president. What do you in, mean? In in votes. Approval. Yeah, you mean in, votes. Yeah. <laughs> in, get, in garnering votes. Yes, yeah, it garnered more votes than yes. both Hillary People Clinton skipped the presidential Trump. election, but they certainly voted for weed. Yeah. Yes. Or I against weed, depending. On that. Right. right. Depending <laughs> on your, your views, yeah. No, but uh, New Year's is, is great. I mean, I have a lot of traditions. We're going to get into <clears throat> some of those throughout the show. Uh, mm -hmm. Tara, do you have any special New Year's traditions, we... uh, a special pillow that you like to smuggle with or something? No, no. We would bang <laughs> pots and pans outside at midnight. That was our, like, family tradition. Yes. That was it. Oh, yes. man. So we did that, too. Tame. And in <laughs> fact, I, I have a recollection of my mother being very upset Although she knew when she handed five kids these pots and pans that yes. there was going to be, gonna be some, noise. some collateral damage. <laughs> no, it wasn't the noise. One of my brothers really beat this pan to death. Oh, no. And it bent. Oh, <laughs> and no. she could never use it again. Yeah. She kept it as sort of a memory. Yeah, sure. But I remember I beating pots and pans on New Year's Eve at midnight. Um, but I, my favorite tradition is the food on New Year's Day. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pork and sauerkraut. Ooh. Pork oh, chops. So you wait till the next day? To eat on those? New Year's Day is okay. when you, you're traditionally Sweet. supposed to start the New Year. I think it's a tradition of good luck. It is, to, yeah. To start with pork, yeah. in our case, pork chops, and, and uh, you can have, you know, so, certainly sauerkraut. Applesauce. But applesauce, potatoes, you know, sweet potatoes, whatever you want. You we know. always ate that exactly at midnight, right after we celebrated. Oh, really? oh that's a eat. nice tradition. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and oh my gosh. That I, took the edge off the champagne. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and yeah. whatever else you Filled were drinking. You uh, we're going to get into it a little bit later. You, you may not be with us, John, unfortunately. I know you, and then you have to run at... Well, probably I can, hour. well, I probably can give you it till 1040, 1040, 40. maybe, if okay, that works well, for you. If it doesn't, if you've got other guests coming on, I'm happy to leave. I got to get back downtown. Well, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna, yeah, at the end of the show, I'm going to get into uh, my New Year's tradition. 
Oh. And uh, some of my, my family New Year's traditions and why New Year's has become such an important holiday to okay, me. And good. why I enjoy that. So you'll have to listen back. I'll listen back, on of that course. One. Uh, but there is one New Year's tradition I would like to ban. Matt Geica always does the, the banning of the cliche on his show where he bans a bad sports cliche. I'm going to ban a stupid New Year's tradition, and that is the announcement of the first baby born on New Year's. <laughs> Ava Loke here, who was born... And she's the first baby born in 2017. And everyone goes, everyone it, throws up the arms and goes, in, oh, in the Pittsburgh. first baby born in, in Pittsburgh in 2017. Oh, in oh, Pittsburgh, not in the Pittsburgh. world. Well, in Pittsburgh. but I Well, mean, because of the time zones, we would how, never how be first. How old is Pittsburgh? Yeah. How old is Pittsburgh? As a, well, the, uh, the city itself is 200 years old as a city. Yes. But this area was uh, founded in uh, 1758. So as a city, we'll just, we'll just give it as a city. We've had 200 first babies born. It's not that special. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that special. Oh, come on. You're being a Grinch. I just can't stand stuff There's like this. Nothing. It's like whenever we go to the, like, the Steelers playoffs and all of a sudden all the babies have terrible towels and it's like breaking news and they're breaking news all over the place. Babies have terrible towels on them. <laughs> you know, I and sort of... Where's my glasses? I need my glasses. You don't like... I, ba you have a problem with babies. Is what no, I, 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 don't I have feel sorry. Babies. I I'm always... putting on the glasses, which knows you mean... No, you know I mean that that it's big news. We, we've talked about this on on previous shows. People like Anderson Cooper oh, they wear oh, the glasses, glasses when it's a when it's a big important meeting, but when it's just regular broadcasting, <laughs> the glasses operative. come off. So well, no, I mean this is serious. So you know, we're talking about the baby tradition. I just think it needs to go. There's more important things to talk about. There's more interesting things to talk about. But you're missing a big point. You've got to feel sorry for the parents whose baby is born first in 2017 or any time after the stroke of midnight. They've lost a tax exemption. <laughs> See, if you are born on December 31st or earlier, you can be deducted in your 2016 taxes. That those poor parents, their wonderful, beautiful daughter, is it? I'm looking it's here. Daughter, to see. They missed it by seconds. They missed that tax exemption. And what is it up to now? Was it 2,700, 3,000 per bucks? child? Per child. I can't wow. remember what it is. Should be more. My, than that. my kids are no longer deductible. That's the yeah. other problem. You know, they'd be, when they get older, and I'm, mine are in their 20s. When, uh -huh. when your kids get past, I think it's 18, actually. Really? Okay. You can't deduct them. Well, you can anymore. get health oh. insurance I can get, even later than that. That's right. They can, they're can. they on my health insurance. <laughs> unless uh, unless Trump uh, gets rid of Obamacare, then, then that way. Well, he has already said, he uh, said he wants to keep that, that he wants to yeah. keep it. And we'll see whether the Republicans in the Congress will go along with that. But uh, there are so many people who would like to keep that, that and the pre-existing conditions. My wife is a cancer survivor, breast mm -hmm. cancer survivor, and it was wrong to discriminate against a woman or a man sure. for Absolutely. a pre-existing medical condition. Obamacare Absolutely. fixed that. These people who think Obamacare is just 100% bad yeah. are clueless because there is much in Obamacare that was good. Now, there's plenty to criticize. Sure. But um, what you want to see happen is that the bad stuff gets repealed and replaced and the good stuff we keep so, yeah. yeah i mean there are, that there's happens. a lot of things wrong with it like you said but uh, that doesn't mean you get rid of everything that that's bad you right know, it's just you right. have to be smart about it and that's the thing is we live in this culture where everything's a sound bite and it sounds exciting you know we're gonna repeal and replace right and it sounds well, exciting they, to say you know, the problem is they've talked a lot about repeal but very little about replace so yes. we haven't seen yet what is the Republican plan to replace Obamacare? It's all hype. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of that because they think that everybody wants to repeal this stuff. But I think that if you polled the American public in a fair and accurate poll, what you'd see is they want to repeal some yes. and they want to keep some. Right. Sure. So, it's not perfect. No. Right. But no. It's, I don't know. What do you, fundamentally, I, I disagree with the, the concept of forcing someone to buy from a private industry. But that doesn't mean why that. though. Private industry can do better a lot of times than the government can. Because you shouldn't be beholden to private interests. Well, you but are forced to buy know. private driver's insurance. But you're to not drive forced your car. to drive. That's true. You that didn't really true. make a choice in your your. Although birth. in most people, mm. you would have not. to drive. So you think there should be a choice of health care? You mean like to ha to not have health care? I think you should have the option. I, I mean, I just don't think. Or do you want a public option? That might be an idea as well. I just don't, I don't That's like... That's very liberal. That's Bernie Sanders. I, I know, but I don't like the idea of forcing, especially the way we have it set up right now, where you still can't buy across state lines. So now you're beholden to an oligarchy of insurers that have you... We're, beho the we're beholden to Comcast. We're beholden to all no, kinds I mean, of people. Not, I don't pay for cable. 
You don't, don't but cable. you don't use like internet or at all, or yeah. But there's other options be, besides Comcast for internet. No, but Comcast not, owns the cables. They own and I'm the. Also not forced they to own buy the internet. infrastructure. It's their being, stuff. There's a the difference between being forced to purchase something and having the option to, to purchase it. Yeah, they may be yeah. my only option, but I, I don't have to have internet. I mean, I could just go with the phone. My friend uh, Randy, who hosts the Culture Cruise with me, doesn't have a computer. He just uses his phone for everything. Right. So um, wow. there are... Well, that's part of the problem with broadcast news. People aren't watching uh, television. Young folks aren't watching yeah, television like news. Yeah, like not buying cable, um, right? Well, it's well, not just that. Antennas. They antennas. They go, you know, they they go on their phones. Yeah. Those aren't phones. They get yeah. their news. They pick and choose. They decide they're going to watch uh, the River's Edge or right. listen to the or River's Edge. Or even YouTube, Edge like you YouTube know? has live news coverage, and you can tune in there. A lot of I, a lot of stations going into the future are moving more towards this internet-based broadcasting. A lot of well, professional studios as well. I mean, everything we do at our television station is online. Yes, and mm -hmm. we live stream a lot. And before I go home at the end of the day, I take my TV stories and I put them into a print version that goes mm -hmm. online and then it's linked to the video so people can watch the video. And the assumption is that, that uh, particularly in the years ahead, this year and as we get into the next, the 2020s, more and more people will be uh, getting their news by going online and picking and choosing the stories they want to watch right. rather than tuning into a news broadcast at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, or whenever, we've got a ton of news on our station. Well, another thing so. that you can also do, which, which is nice, is something like we do here, where a lot of people like to see this show live, and we have the live, the 5 o'clock, ours is 10, but you, you get the right. idea. And then a lot of times people will watch throughout the day, so they could still pick and choose right. when they're going to watch is it. Is anybody watching this show right now? Yeah. We yeah. Can you yeah. tell? Can you get yeah. a few people watching? Yeah. So we, and, we haven't uh, bored them yet? Not yet, no. <laughs> and the thing is, it's weird. Like, Facebook has very weird analytics. A lot of times the numbers that show up as you know, they're watching now, and then like you look at the main page, and the numbers are completely different. Right. So, uh, I think a lot of times what they're telling you the, the number of people that are watching, it's not always accurate. You can't fact, be sure. In fact, I was just doing a live video on my phone, and it said that uh, one of my friends was watching, but another friend who wasn't listed as watching liked the video and was watching the video. <laughs> so, uh, Facebook in its real time analytics, I, I don't think are always as accurate right. as the, yeah. the right. post <laughs> analytics. So, yeah, but. Uh, what was, in your opinion, the uh, most exciting news story of 2016 that you covered in well, I don't particular? Think, I don't think there was any doubt about the presidential election. Sure. I went to every Trump rally, every Clinton rally. I went to almost every event with their surrogates. I covered both the Republican convention in Cleveland and the Democratic convention in Philadelphia. Uh, it was nonstop for me. Wow. And, and I had the opportunity to interview... Uh, well, I interviewed uh, Hillary Clinton, I interviewed uh, Tim Kaine, I interviewed uh, Donald Trump Jr., and I interviewed Mike Pence, the vice president. Donald Trump did not give any interviews to any local television reporters in Pennsylvania. Why and, do you think that uh, is? Um, well, they... It's surprising given how much effort he put He was here, right? He was here, yeah. right? Now. Yeah, and he was here a lot. So that's but obviously he, very calculated. He talk, as far as I know, he talked to one print reporter... And that was in the Pittsburgh area, and that was it. Um, and, you know, it's it's hard to explain. I mean, candidates mm -hmm. make up their own minds. I don't think that it necessarily had to do with the, the reporters. Sure. Because I think we've got good reporters in Pennsylvania. I think it had more to do with time. Mm -hmm. And also there's a calculation. <clears throat> they know that if they talk to a local reporter, the story is going to be however the local reporter the questions that he or she asks. Yes. Whereas if they just rely on the the event itself, the only thing we cover, we can cover, is frankly what happens at the event, which is the talk from the, the candidate and interviews with the people who show up there, sure. both protesters and the people themselves. So I think they think, they, meaning candidates think, they have more control by not talking to local reporters. Donald Trump, of course, talked to the national mm -hmm. reporters a lot, and he would call in different shows. Are you worried about the way he handled those national reporters where, where he blackballed the Washington Post <clears throat> and refused to, to work with them at different times and uh, the situation with Fox News and... You know, picking uh, and, a fight with... Yeah, uh, one with of the, the early morning... The, an she, the, the anchor, yeah. Right. Well, you know... <laughs> Again, 
I don't want to make more out of it than it is. I think that that we'll see when he becomes president on the 20th of January. Mm -hmm. We'll see how his media relations work. Uh, president Obama's were not very good either. I mean, uh, the, President Obama was was not as uh, conducive to, to the press mm -hmm. as some might have thought he would have been at the beginning. There was a bit of a love-hate relationship, that, as far as I could see, with the Washington press corps. And I think that's likely to be the same with Donald Trump. And every president has their favorite reporters and their favorite <laughs> news stations and the people they go to. You know, Obama refused to go on Fox. You didn't see him on Fox. True. And, right. uh, and uh, Trump could be just the opposite. Maybe Fox is the only station he'll go on. He certainly doesn't like CNN. So, well, can you I'm, blame them when the emails came out that they were? <laughs> well, right. I mean, communications with the DNC. I, I think the bottom line is that that you just uh, presidents can form their own ways of doing things, and and I don't want to get uh, too uptight over any of this until I see what happens, and I'm not especially worried. I know that that uh, people, you know, there are those on the left who would say this is the worst president ever elected <laughs> in American history. Well, I've lived through a whole bunch of presidents, and there have been a whole lot of folks that we thought were, the worst. were going to be the worst and yeah. turned out to be better. Some turned out to be better. Some actually we thought were going to be good turned out to be worse. Sure. So, you know, it's, uh, hey, it's America. You know, we're not stuck with anybody for more than four years. The public can have a chance to make a judgment. And the fact is, Bri, you're going to go on with your life. I'm going to go on with my life. Tara's going to go on with her <laughs> life. And none of it's going to matter too much what's happening down there in the White House. Do you think that he ran maybe, and you've been in, in politics for, for a long time, do you think he ran one of the most, uh, one of the most ingenious campaigns in, in, in modern politics? I mean, I look at his campaign and people say he's an idiot. I, I say he's a genius. Well, he, he ran a campaign that he needed to run to win the states that he needed to win. But it's also fair to say that Hillary Clinton's campaign screwed up. Sure. And so it, when you look at the results, just take Pennsylvania. 44,000 votes separated the two candidates out of 6 million votes cast. Yeah. Even less in the state of Michigan and in Wisconsin. So the fact is that we're talking really small numbers. And had the Clinton campaign done some things that they did not do, in particular to have a message to, in my view, white working class Democrats, uh, the people who live in Washington County, Fayette County, Beaver County, Westmoreland County, not the urban centers. Mm -hmm. they, she did very well in the urban centers and in fact carried Allegheny County by more votes than Barack Obama. Oh, wow. So her problem was not in among, you know, African Americans or women uh, in the cities or with her core constituents there. Her problem was out in the bur out beyond the burbs in the Beaver counties of the world, the Lawrence mm -hmm. counties. She you can count forty four thousand votes for Donald Trump just in southwestern Pennsylvania alone. And he oh, went yeah. there. She never and he went, went there. She never went there. Right. Bill Clinton did go to Aliquippa. I mean he made one venture into Beaver County. He also went down to Washington County. Um, my sources tell me there was a huge battle within the Clinton campaign. Okay. And between Bill Clinton and these younger Brooklynites hmm, who ran, who were running the campaign for Hillary, um, President Clinton knew that you had to win white votes. Yeah. You can't, I mean, the mistake I think the campaign made is it's 2016, not 2056. Mm -hmm. Whites are not a minority yet. And so if you're going to win a presidential election, sure, you want to win African-American votes. You want to win Hispanic votes. <clears throat> um, you want to win as many of the different groups that have been the basis of the Democratic Party. But you can't diss the other vote, the, the other strong party, which has been union Democrats. Um, white and union Democrats. Both parties until Donald Trump, and this is where I get into a lot of arguments with people because they like to throw the race card around <clears> there, and there is a racial element to some of his supporters for sure, sure. but uh, the average supporter is just somebody who has been ignored by both parties. Yeah. Both parties right. have completely left these people right. Right. stranded. And let me bring it back to issues because I agree with you. There, You can always find a race component in everything. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody likes to call other people racist. And to me, that's a way to get out from making legitimate arguments on sure. the merits and not on the merits. 
But in the case of the Trump-Clinton race, Trump had a message on trade. He had a message on energy. And in this region, people who are losing their jobs because of coal or because of, uh, of the, the inability to frack or do as much drilling for natural gas, there are market reasons for a lot of this. Mm -hmm. The steel, the collapse of steel uh, because of foreign Chinese, illegal Chinese dumping in the U.S. Trump had a message. Where was Hillary Clinton? I mean, yeah. that was a message that resonated in Washington County, Beaver County, Fayette County, Greene County, Westmoreland County, Lawrence Michigan. County, Butler County. All these counties, most of whom, most of which are Democratic counties, yeah. went for Trump in big numbers. He had the message. She did not. It was a terrible mistake. And it was very, in my view, you could have found a way to, to resolve that. You don't need... Uh, yeah. To, to, to diss the the other supporters you have in order to embrace these these would be supporters, sure. you need the grand coalition. And even if they right. were, even if they right. were a minority group, uh, it still votes that that are here. You know, it's, it's yeah. You know, it, just as just as you should focus on Hispanic issues and things like that, you should focus on you know on all of your constituents. Right. Well, and and for the Democratic Party in particular, which is so beholden to constituency politics, mm -hmm. you need to make sure you bring all your constituencies on board. Obviously, you need African-American votes. That's what delivered Philadelphia to her in yeah. huge numbers, almost as, as big as for Barack Obama. Um, you, you clearly want, and, and he, she did well, although not quite as well as people thought she would among Hispanic voters, but she did very well, and that counted for her in certain states. Um, and she did well among women in the suburbs. Now, not quite as well as she thought she could, but she won some of the more liberal women Republican voters mm -hmm. in suburban Philly and in suburban Pittsburgh. But the fourth leg of that constituency, white working class union Democrats, um, she just totally bombed on which is is huge as a as a democrat to, right. to lose that and, and i think it's going to make for some very interesting politics in 2017 <clears throat> how can the democratic party bring back that important element within the party uh that they need for victories in 2018 and of course nobody wants to think about 2020 that's yeah. the next presidential <laughs> election but, please you know, give us a few ready. years <laughs> you know right give us a break yeah uh, real quick i, I know you got to run but i did want to touch my is it time to run already almost, yeah, Whoa. It's 10 30. It's, oh, this, this shit wow. is quick uh two things uh upmc they've apparently reached a deal where they're gonna be donating some things to the city in lieu yep. of paying taxes right what are your thoughts on that well i think it's absolutely correct that we have 40 nonprofits in the city of Pittsburgh. They have about a third of the property, yeah. and yet they're not paying property taxes because they are so-called nonprofits. Uh, Even the though they have their, their name on the tallest building in right. the city. Uh, there's now, too the, many names the, on, the, around no, no, our city. That's I hate That's a whole it. other issue. <laughs> but the four biggest nonprofits, which would be the UPMC, Highmark, the University of Pittsburgh, and Carnegie Mellon University, are in discussions with the mayor's office. The hope is that they will... Uh, come up with dollars in lieu of taxes. It's called PLEOs, payments in lieu of taxes. And uh, um, I hope they can work this out because when they last did this, it was these were voluntary payments. I believe it was like two and a half million bucks mm -hmm. that that the nonprofits contributed, even though they were not required by law to contribute. If some folks will remember that Luke Ravenstall, Mayor Ravenstall, had a lawsuit against yes. these folks. And when uh, Mayor Peduto came into office, he withdrew the lawsuit saying, let's cut a deal. And this is all part of the deal, although it's, you know, it's been going on. The mayor's up for re-election. He still doesn't have his deal yet. Yeah. So he's trying very hard, I think, in the next month to show that there's a deal. I don't think it's a done deal quite yet. Let me see. Um, but I think it's in the works. And the hope is that the city will be able to get some two and a half million plus, maybe more. And it's going to be in a fund. They're talking about putting it in a fund mm -hmm. that would be used to help redevelop the city. It's not going to be used to pay city council members their salaries or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so, yeah, it looks like they're, they're very close to a deal here. It says uh, nearly two years financial negotiations among Pittsburgh's biggest nonprofit employers and local governments. I'm reading from the Post-Gazette. 
leaders may reach a fruitful conclusion in the new year. So yeah. it looks like I think that's close. right. I think that's what we're all hearing is that yeah. is that they're close, but I don't think they've signed off finally yet. We'll yeah. hear. What was the other issue? The, the other issue is uh, Kathleen Kane is in the news again. Oh, yeah. And the well, special uh, attorneys that she hired to look into the porn gate <clears throat> scandal, uh, the state does not want to pay them now. Yeah, there's a couple different things going on. First of all, with respect to her, because people say to me, isn't she in jail yet? Well, no, she's not in jail. Okay. She was sentenced to at least 10 months, 10 to 20 months or something in jail. Mm -hmm. um, she, uh, however, posted bond to file an appeal, and they then got a delay in the appeal, which means I believe January 6th is the date by which she has to, to submit her mm. appeal of her conviction. Part of the re reason for that is she has new attorneys. And it took the new attorneys a little while to get the materials from the old attorneys, go through them, and mm -hmm. make their legal arguments. So that's one issue. The other issue, the one you're talking about, is that the incumbent attorney general, he, he was named after Kathleen Kane resigned, Bruce Beamer, who's a Pittsburgh attorney, mm -hmm. uh, but he's the attorney general until Josh Shapiro takes the oath of office later this month. Um, Beamer has said, I'm not so sure I want to pay for mm -hmm. these this uh, study in Porngate. Um, actually, he's paid some. He just doesn't want to pay, pay the, the whole, whole amount because yeah. they've asked for a couple million bucks, I yeah, think. That's what that they some... were, yeah, that's what they were billed, but they were unsatisfied with the results of the investigation. So, well, we know that, uh, I mean, we do know there was uh, porn distributed by members of the state Supreme Court. A couple of them had to resign yeah. as a result. So um, clearly there was something going on there. Whether these lawyers are worth what they charge, I mean, that's a, to me, that's a, a whole other right. story. Yeah. It's all billable that, hours it, it, Yeah, right. And it's not really Kathleen Kane's doing. Uh, no, but just yeah. like the three. Although she's the there. one, <laughs> she is the one who uh, alleged, and she was right, I mean, give her credit, yep. that there was something funny going on among these uh, justices of the Supreme Court when it comes to their emails. Can we make, uh, and this is my final thoughts on this issue, yeah. and, and then I, we're going to move into uh, people who've croaked and people who've survived in 27, or 2016, <laughs> but before we get into that, uh, can we make a New Year's resolution, as, as the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, that we're not going to send any elected officials to jail? In 2017, is that a <laughs> fair know, resolution to make? Well, it's a wonderful resolution. You <laughs> mean if they don't do anything? If they don't do even anything if they wrong, do something wrong. I mean, you're saying you you would hope that none of our state officials would do anything charged, illegal yeah. this year. Not nothing besides like uh, you know a misdemeanor. Anything? Okay, all right. Anything you're crazy. allowed to have get a parking ticket. Yeah, you get a parking ticket, but, but nothing <laughs> nothing overboard. Is, is that a fair resolution oh, it, to ask? It's so un-Pennsylvanian. I know I mean, it's kind of like asking, uh, you know, somebody to to make a resolution to, you know, to hit the gym this year. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> It'll last a day or two. Yeah, 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 yeah that's about right there. I mean, we are unfortunately a state that uh, has, I think, one of the worst corruption records of oh, any God. state. I'm from New Jersey too, so well, I'm gonna throw yeah. my hat in the ring. <laughs> okay, so New Jersey and Pennsylvania, maybe they're vying for first place the, here. Yeah. Different flavors. But we just, uh, it's unbelievable the number of state officials, state reps, state senators, county officials, and of course, even statewide officers yeah. like Kathleen Kane who get in trouble. Uh, we've just elected some new folks and reelected one one old, well, he's not so old, person <laughs> as our three state row officers in uh, Eugene D. Pasquale was reelected as uh, Auditor General. Joe Torcella as state treasurer and Josh Shapira as uh, attorney general. They're brand new to statewide office. And uh, all right, I'll keep my fingers crossed with all you right. that none of them get in trouble. We'll see. I hope it works. <laughs> right, John, it's always a pleasure having hey, you Hey, you know, it's you good could... to be with you, Brian. Yeah, all the best to you. Sometime. Tara, nice to, to be with you. you. I hope you'll have me back sometime. Absolutely. Anytime. Up next, we're going to talk about who's croaked and uh, who should have croaked, possibly. <laughs> In 2016, we've got Matt. Who Russia. should have croaked? Well, who maybe, not that we want them to die. I'm glad I'm not part of that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could only get me in wow. trouble. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that up next. Then we've got Matt Geica at 1040. And then Weird News, the uh, top weird news stories of the year, according to the Huffington Post. And uh, we'll see if they match up to the stories that we have uh, told you here throughout the year at riversedgepgh.com. But all of that and more here on Pittsburgh's Voice for Local Music, River's Edge.
Would you be interested in developing conscious choice? Would you be interested in creating reactions rather than waiting for one to come? Would you be interested in combining serendipity and synchronicity? Would you be interested in making one plus one equals three? Would you be interested in finding out about full impact mindfulness? If so, I challenge you to join myself, Jim Ellermeyer, a cognitive behavioral health therapist, every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. on the river's edge where we will challenge you to allow us to help you help yourself to fully participate in your life. Let the adventure begin. All right, we're back here on the River's Edge Radio Network, and I've got a list of people who croaked in 2016, and I'm going to ask Tara if she knows of somebody who maybe uh, could have died or or should have died. Not that we want anybody to to die. We, We don't, but... We're just talking about people who uh, maybe live, they live life on the edge. So um, it, it would not, it would, we wouldn't have been surprised if they died. Let, let's put it that way. Oh, okay. So like not people that we want to die. It's not like, you know, oh, we don't like him. We want him to die. But like somebody like, like, like say like Donald Trump where it's like, well, you know, people, a lot of people hated him. We're surprised. Like, you know, yeah. didn't like, you know, do something terrible to him. Uh, so something like that. So uh, I'll go first. Uh, Gene Wilder, the, uh, yeah, the, the comedian who played... Uh, Willy Wonka and Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. So many great he movies. He died and people were, were so shocked and surprised. So, and uh, you he... weren't? What's that? You weren't surprised? I, I just, I, I don't get too emotional over these things and I'll, I'll talk about that in a, in a, in a minute, why. Um, but yeah, I was, no, I, I wasn't really, like, I, I wasn't too shook up over it. I mean, I, I didn't, wasn't happy, you know, I mean, he was a good actor, but I wasn't. He was the one, that made me the saddest, I think, of mm-hmm. all the people who died this year. That was the one that hit me mm-hmm. in my heart. Somebody that you really enjoyed as yeah, an Yeah, yeah. And, like, if, when Bob Dylan dies, like, I'll probably cry. Uh-huh. You know? But there's not too many people that you care about in that way, I guess. I, I guess. Um, uh, okay, so who, who do you think should have died or could have died? Could have. I thought, um, hmm. Someone you were surprised that maybe they didn't die. <laughs> that they didn't die. Um... I don't know. Okay, I'll give you one. Charlie Sheen. How many drugs has that guy put well, through his body? That's a good he's point. Still, uh, he's still kicking. He's winning. Is he, though? I don't know. Well, he's still alive. He's I not, guess uh, so. He's not Gene Wilder. Well, Gene Wilder was like 80. True. But so is Charlie Sheen, probably. His How about, body. like, Justin Bieber? Okay. Why is that? Just because people... Just, you know, he, uh... That well, people live in the high life. Yeah. Oh, plus, he's got, like, a lot of crazy fans, like, fans who love yeah. him, who I could see, like... Young, crazy he's got, stalkers. Like, the creepy, yeah, the creepy kind of fans. I so. think the people at his concerts are are really mostly eight years old, though. So yeah. maybe not a big danger. We punched that one dude. Did you see that? No. Yeah, oh, like a guy, paparazzi? This guy got... No, he was, like, a fan who, like, reached into his car oh. while he was driving off, and he punched him in the face, and he got a bloody nose. So some, some guy can say that... I, I don't know how, how... Got beat up by Justin happy, Bieber. Yeah, he got beat up by Justin Bieber. I don't know how... How that affects his confidence, but have you happens. ever been beat up? Um, no, I've never been beaten up. I've gotten into fights before, but I wouldn't say like anyone really got beat up. It was more, yeah, skirmish and then it ended. How about you? No, no, never. I wouldn't let that happen. No, uh, Fidel Castro, he he croaked, and then some people were upset about that. Some people were like, Oh, he was a great champion for you know, for this or that, uh, yeah, wearing khaki, yeah. In the Awful. 50s. Yeah, terrible. But people, like, in, you know, some of our own political people were kind of... I don't really know anything about him. Um, I already, I think I probably already thought he was dead by the time I heard that he was dead. And he was, like, sick for a lot of time. Yeah, like, bedridden. Yes. he was sick, yeah. Yeah. So, like, Kim finally... Jong-il kind of, when did yeah. he die? Who really knows? Yeah, but this guy, he finally croaked. Um, Alan Thicke, Carrie Fisher, we've talked about both of them on Carrie the show. Fisher was surprising. That was surprising, yeah. What was even more surprising was her mother died. That was, like I know, like a week later. Like right after, yeah. Less than a week later, maybe. Um, George Michael was really young. Yeah, that was true. That was a surprise. Christmas thing Day. As well. Arnold Palmer wasn't shocking to me, but it was still, you know, sad to see him go. And, uh, and I'll get into my, my thing. And this is why I don't care. Like I said at the beginning of the show, a bunch of people who I don't know died. My year was great. I, yeah. I feel bad that they died. I mean, you never want to see someone die. But uh, it drives me nuts on Facebook. Everyone, you know, grandma dies... 
and she barely gets a she barely gets a sentence. Somebody like you know, like Alan Thicke dies, and someone's changing their profile picture, their cover picture, posting deep poems and memes, and going nuts. Oh no, Alan Thicke, the guy from Growing Pains, he's dead. And you get all of that, and I'm thinking, you don't even know the guy. You didn't even care, care this much about your, your grandma. The fact is, is, you don't care if that Alan Thicke died. You just want people to like your Facebook status. And that's what it came to. That's what it's come to. In 2016, it's a way for people to bitch, whine, and draw attention to their Facebook posts because they're pathetic. Yeah, well, it is definitely... Pathetic. Um, a bandwagon thing, maybe, for lack of a better term. What's the thing? Everyone says, oh, 2016, thank God you're done, you're dead, thank God, you're awful, you're terrible. None of these people have done any self-reflection. They're, <laughs> just, they're just saying 2016 sucks well, because that's so what they've been told to say. If people were writing yeah. Facebook poems about their dead grandma to get Facebook likes, would that be, you'd be okay with that? No, but maybe then they actually care about their, their grandma and mm -hmm. that's just an outlet I need to spend more, yeah. I mean, this... You know, if you're pasting the, posting the same meme that 10 other people posted in an attempt to try to draw up some likes, I'm sorry. I think that's, that's that, first off, that's kind of creepy and it's kind of sick. That's all what um, some people are capable of. You don't have anything else that matters to you in life? I guess, like, <laughs> I've always been in a situation where, I don't you know, think... I've gone through the stores and I've seen, you know, the, the tabloids or I've seen, you know, so-and-so says this or so-and-so says that. And I, I've always said to myself, who cares? It's all a lot. It's all... But even if Lies, it is true, anyway. like, even, even when it is true, like, yes. if it's on the, the legitimate media, I'm thinking, why am I supposed to care what X celebrity has to say? Uh, I mean, it's like watching a TV uh, show, you know? It's like you're invested in these characters, and that's, it's all... But then you pretend it's real. It's like in a magazine, like, oh, this yeah. Kim Kardashian story is real. By the way, did you hear about the queen? No, is she sick? They dethroned her. And they have her locked away in a castle because she <laughs> the was... The Queen of England? Yes, because she was uh, trying to usurp uh, the the heir... Uh, what? what was it? Her, her son or something was supposed to get the throne, but she wants to give it to someone else in the family, so they, they dethroned her and they have her locked up. This is according to uh, the global uh, World Globe News. I see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But you see, like, yeah. you had me, like, believing that yeah, for right? a second. Like, I'm... Like, I wish it was we want real. We love those kind of That's stories. That's yeah. another one of the points. True. People were obsessed with death and you know that kind of intrigue oh i just got a missed call from matt geica so uh let's uh let me mm, get yeah. my phone we're actually gonna go straight into his segment if i can get my uh can you hand me that cord for the phone oh, uh, thank you You're welcome let's see if we can get him on the phone i might have it over here i did have it yeah i thought well, let's see We'll get him back on. We've got Matt together. Geica coming on the phone. I was running a little over because we were talking about celebrity deaths, but he's going to come on and we're going to talk this week, the new year in sports, if it'll work, if my phone will call. I, my phone does this thing where I tap something and it's like I have to tap it four or five times before it That's actually not right. does what I want it to do. And it's a, it's a good phone. It's just, it's just my like, glitching. So uh, we'll get Matt on here in one second. Uh, Matt, are you there? He is there. Okay, let's plug him in, and we'll get him rolling. Uh, let's see. Matt, are you there? Yes, Brian. All Happy right. New Year. Happy New Year. How are you? Uh, terrific. It feels uh, like a new me in 2017. <laughs> Good for you. I'm, I'm still feeling tired and <laughs> exhausted. But, uh, but it, well, we'll see how long it lasts, but at least for right now, feeling pretty sharp. Good, good. This is, uh, yeah, I know. I saw you, uh, you had some time off, correct? Uh, yeah, yesterday, that was the first day I hadn't done a lick of work in very many days. Well, I guess Christmas was in there, too. But mm -hmm. <laughs> the uh, the previous 10 days or so for me were really busy. I went back to school, if you will. I right. covered pit basketball against my alma mater in Marshall last uh, Wednesday. And then I had the Spirit Rivers Classic College Hockey Tournament Thursday and Friday. And uh, then I helped Josh Yoey cover Penguins and Canadians on New Year's Eve. So... There was quite a bit there, and uh, I was happy to shut it down for at least 24 hours. There you go. It's always nice to have a break. I know how that can be. I, I unfortunately, my, my break from the studio was, was longer hours at work, so I didn't, huh, uh, yeah. didn't get much of a break. And then I came back today, and I'm lucky you can hear me now. I, I almost canceled my show today because I, uh, I almost lost my voice. I came in and it was I was at work overnight. My voice is coming. My voice is going. I'm like, oh no, I got I got to I got to get this going. It's like I've been off for two weeks because of these twelve hour shifts. I finally have a chance to get back. I had a so, you know some great people lined up, including yourself, for today's show. And uh, and luckily, 
about an, a couple hours before I went live, uh, my throat's still kind of weird, but it, it mostly mostly evaporated, so that was great. Well, that's the one thing you can't not have <laughs> in radio is yeah, voice, bad so voice. I, <laughs> I understand your nervousness. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so what's going on in, in the new year in sports? Well, for one thing, this is a totally new thing, and I'll get to the Steelers in a bit. I figure that uh, most people are aware they're playing the Dolphins coming up on Sunday at 1 p.m. in an AFC wild card game. But the other team in town that had been red hot in December with a record of 12-1-2, and just one regulation loss in 15 games, were the Penguins. And that overtime win they had against Montreal on New Year's Eve, that's the last game they'll play for a week. The NHL, for the first time ever, is instituting a bye week, if you will. That's kind of a football term. I'll call it an off week. Oh. But some of the players and the coaches have called it a bye week. So each team will have seven days off between games. And it's five days completely off. You know, speaking of downtime for me and you, Brian, they'll have five days away from everything. And wow. uh, players going back home in some cases, some hanging around the area. But they'll have that and then two days of practice before they play the, the Lightning next Sunday. And with how well the team was playing, I think maybe some at that uh, dressing room thought it to be a mixed blessing. Mm -hmm. But I think for the most part, considering how deep the Pens went into the summer with the Stanley Cup playoffs, June 12th was their last day of play. And then the World Cup, for some of them, shortened their offseason to less than three months. So that's not a ton of time away after playing 100 plus games. And the schedule has been compressed because of that World Cup. The regular season started a bit later. Add all that together, and it was a welcome break, even though the Pens have been, I want to say, one of the hottest teams because the Columbus Blue Jackets have won 15 in a row, to everyone's surprise. So it's been a great race in the Metro, and now we hit the pause button for seven days. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, now, did you actually take a break on your, on your time off, Matt? Or did you, did I did actually you, take did a break? You, did you actually, like, did, like in, in secret, do stuff? Because I, I kind of did that when I took my... <laughs> uh, my little break when I had some time off, I you know I said I'm not going to be in the studio at all, and then I was here like every day for like a half hour. <laughs> well, yesterday at least I did step away okay. completely outside of uh, editing one piece for our website, which I don't consider to be much work. So uh, I suppose it was for the most part enough. But I think I'm like you, Brian. I have a hard time taking a full day off. I'm not one to completely unplug. I've never been one to. Uh, go to the beach in the summertime and just sit around. I'm always going to be reading a book or trying to uh, stimulate my brain in some way or another. So mm. uh, people like us, I believe, have a difficult time unplugging, but also at the same time, maybe that means we uh, especially need to, to find a way to do so. Yeah, probably. I know I was on a cruise once, and I stepped away, and I paid for internet, cruise internet, to check on things to see how things were going here. <laughs> in the studio but uh no it's crazy yeah i'm excited i think it's going to be a a good year i'm interested to see how the steelers do uh, i they i felt that sunday's game against the browns despite not having any of their starters in in the lineup for the most part was uh was still a little too close oh i would agree against with that, that. i think the steelers <laughs> agree with that yeah mike tomlin said and i quote there was some ugliness to our game and there were some aspects of that one that uh, indicated they weren't at their best but with completely nothing on the line and I mean nothing for the Steelers because they already had the three seed locked in they couldn't move up or down the AFC playoff field and after that really emotional game the division deciding game against Baltimore on Christmas Day you have to figure for a letdown and, and I know they say most of the starters played and, and they did but Landry Jones was your quarterback and there was no Le'Veon Bell and there was no Antonio Brown and those are the three guys that make your offense go for the most part so yes a football team is a big team, and there are plenty of players. But uh, at the same time, three of the most important ones were were sitting out, and James Harrison also didn't play too on the on the defensive side. But I don't think that's going to make the Steelers feel much better about giving up all of those rushing yards to uh, Isaiah Crowell and the Browns yesterday. RG three played well for Cleveland. I, an exciting player, mm -hmm. and maybe the Browns have something going into uh, into 2017. Uh, but to have that one go down to the end, and, and really, Brian, the Browns should have won. They had the ball inside the five with uh, under a minute to go in the fourth quarter and decided to run the ball instead of kneel on it. And uh, so they, they fumbled it. Instead of settling for the field goal, they tried to punch it into the end zone. 
And yeah, they're one in fifteen now. They were one in fourteen, so maybe it doesn't matter one way or the other. But uh, they they really left the door open for the Steelers and, and give Landry Jones and Kobe Hamilton and Demarcus Sayers all the second stringers credit for putting together a, a do or die drive, including that fourth down touchdown. Yeah, it's crazy. I was watching the game from my phone and I and I thought, wow, the Browns are actually uh, going to win, and they didn't. <laughs> but it, it looked like they may have. So. All right. Um, yeah, as. Um, as my parents were uh, were saying, I was at their house yesterday, so a nice little family get together. But only the Browns would do something like that, and I had a hard time <laughs> disagreeing. But we can look forward to the to the playoffs. And and Brian, it's a really nice bounce back chance for the Steelers because they lost big in Miami. You yes. might remember earlier this season, Roethlisberger was hurt in the first half of that game, and he was less than his best, but again, that rush defense, they gave up 200-plus yards to Jay Ajayi, who's maybe the breakout star of this season. He had three games of 200-plus yards on the ground, so kudos to him in a passing era, and with Ryan Tannehill out, the Dolphins' typical starting quarterback, I think it'll be a lot more of of the rush game for Miami. Should make him one-dimensional, but uh, the Steelers know that that one dimension can't be very strong if, if they don't shore up things, they don't mind their gaps, and and get their assignments right. Before I let you go, Matt, what is one of your New Year's traditions? We're talking about our New Year's traditions hmm. today. Well, this year was a little different because I was down at PPG Paints Arena until oh, yes. almost midnight, so I missed the ball yeah. drop. That's the first time I've missed the actual New Year in, well, I can't even remember when the last time I, I actually missed it, maybe five or six years ago. And it was a shame because New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, that's my favorite holiday. I just love the clean slate. Really? Like, that's yeah, having that. that that's my favorite holiday as well. We were talking about that. Is that right? Yeah, that's interesting. Huh. Yeah, I feel that's kind of rare. I heard a lot of people at the Penns game, in fact, some of the media folks saying that New Year's Eve is overrated. For our night with figures out there. And I don't disagree. I think you have to watch yourself if you do go out and be a little more careful. But... There's just something mentally appealing, psychologically appealing uh, about that. So I, I think my tradition is just to completely put the old year in the rear view, and that's very refreshing for me. That's something that uh, I've always done. And uh, I, I know a lot of people around the area like to eat the kielbasa and sauerkraut. That's kind of an Eastern European thing on, on, <laughs> on New Year's Day. So we had some of that at my parents' place. That might be the most solid physical tradition I have. But I just, I love this time of the year. I like when the calendar turns over and, you know, it's a long winter ahead, but at least we have a new year to look at and a new year to plan ahead for. Yeah, absolutely. Matt, thank you very much, as always. You can read Matt at DKPittsburghSports.com. Always great stuff there. And you're still doing the Matt stats, correct, even though you're, you're out of baseball season? Oh, yeah, it's all sports. All and it'll about. be about the Steelers this week. It'll be on the site on, on Thursday. And I'll be back in the studio for Dyke Scott Game, first episode of 2017, later in the week. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, you got it, Brian. Talk to you soon. You too. We're going to take a, a very brief break for promos, station promos, uh, on other great stuff that you can check out here at riversedgepgh.com, only because I'm required to take two breaks. So <laughs> we're going to do that, and then we're going to roll right into the weird news with the top weird news stories of the year, according to the Huffington Post. You're listening to Pittsburgh's Voice for Local Music. Hey, this is Matt Geica, your host of Geik's Got Game, 8 a.m. every Friday here on the River's Edge. I'll take a peek behind the sports media curtain, zoom out for the big picture, and as always, obsess over the details of the sports, teams, and players we love or love to hate. It's Geik's Got Game every Friday at 8 a.m. on the River's Edge. All right, we are back here on the River's Edge, and I, apparently I closed my uh, my list of weird holiday stuff, so we're going to pull that up right now. It's the, <clears throat> the top weirdest stories, according to the Huffington Post, and we'll see what we think of their stories. Uh, number five, actually, we need the weird news music. I forgot about that. It's the uh, bluegrass. There we go. Okay. So, uh, number five, or well, I'll just, I'm not going to do all ten, so we'll just uh, go with this one. Uh, Badass Heroes. It says, uh, not all heroes wear capes. Meet Michaela Kellner of Sweden, an 11 year old veteran of Stockholm, yeah, of the Stockholm Police Department, when a pickpocketed menace, um, 
menace some sunbathers in July, she snapped into action, wrestling the suspect to the ground in her bikini after chasing him down barefoot. So uh, there's videos of that. I guess there's a, an Instagram picture. It's, it's kind of funny. She's like, it's almost like a Wonder Woman type thing. She's really like, kick this guy's ass. Oh, uh, let's see. Number nine, animal uprising. uprising. Humans have had their day and they've brought this planet to the edge of ruin. We at the Huffington Post Weird News have long anticipated the animal uprising. Maybe it won't be super intelligent apes. Maybe it will be a cow in Australia that took on a helicopter. So apparently a, a cow damaged a helicopter in Australia. Uh, criminally incompetent, a jailbreak is no time for vanity. Yet when police in Australia released Amy Sharp's mugshot, the 19-year-old replied on Facebook asking cops to use a more flattering photo. I don't know, what do you think of these weird news stories? I think they suck. Yeah. See, I think I'd... the weird news stories that we pick out each week are much better. Yes. And I, I kind of wanted to... More relatable. I wanted to read these just to kind of stress that point. <laughs> and a lot of the weird news stories that I get come from the Huffington Post. So they have failed at finding their own best weird news stories of the year. I wonder how they decided. I don't know, but this is what I think about that. You get to leave it behind. You get to leave it behind. We need the pooping sound effect. I'm like sure they have a, a pooping sound effect. What? What? It sounds like someone's like, like, you know, got diarrhea in the commode. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's what we need. We need one of those for uh, our show, just so when we talk about crap like that. Yeah. All right, that's it with the weird news. That weird news, again, I'm never going to do... I think the post may have, may have lost some cred in, in that, uh, that compilation Aww. of top weird news stories for the year. Um, New Year's is my favorite holiday, and a lot of reasons why, why a lot of the similar reasons to what Matt has said, but uh, for me, New Year's is, oh yeah, I kind of turn that one off, I know it's obnoxious when you have like multiple things on, yes. running on. Um, New Year's is always like my favorite, my favorite holiday uh, to celebrate with the family, and my family used to, we used to have, oh gosh, like 50 people that would come together for holidays. And every holiday is about the kids, and I, I've talked about this yeah. in the past, and that's okay, a lot of holidays should be. But in Pittsburgh, they try to make St. Patrick's Day about the kids now, and now New Year's about the kids. And those holidays are not about the kids, mm -hmm. they're about the adults. And my family did not forget that. And the kids were there, and we had fun, but it was about the adults. And that was the one holiday of the year that it was about the adults. What, so what does that mean? What does they, that look like when it's about the adults? Okay. You don't have all the kids' games. Instead, let's just put it this way. My parents, growing up, I, I never saw a single beer in the fridge, a single bottle of liquor on the shelf. They, they never drank growing up as a mm -hmm. kid. I never saw them drink going out. They never got a beer going out. And I, I guess both of them had uh, grandparents that you know would go to the bar, and they just didn't like being around that, and they didn't want us to have to, to be exposed to that. So they didn't drink. But New Year's, New Year's, they got plastered, <laughs> plastered drunk. I, I remember we had to wait until the next morning to uh, to drive home because they were just too drunk to, to go or, or leave at any kind of reasonable hour. And we did, they didn't even start drinking until like midnight. That's when it all started. And we all waited around and at the stroke of midnight, and I just remember this is, just, the whole family came together. The men would go into the backyard and shoot firearms at the ground. The kids would go upstairs with noisemakers like this and pots. And uh, one time someone had a trumpet and it was just pure celebration. And just everyone spent the time together. And we had enough sauerkraut that my, my grandfather, and, and I don't remember this because it was before my time, but we always had a ton of sauerkraut even after the fact. And he had enough sauerkraut that it would last him weeks. And he would eat sauerkraut for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for weeks on end. Sauerkraut and kibasi. And to me, New Year's has represented a, a chance for growth. And I personally have always felt that I, I needed to do something different. Mm -hmm. Like something special. And I always had a hard time finding that that thing that I needed to do. And every year, New Year's always reminded me that there was another chance coming in the following year to find my passion, to find out what I wanted to do. And, and through the years, I've done so many different things trying to, to find that and trying to fill a void that I didn't know uh, what was missing. 
And uh, that's why 2016 was so great, because 2016 is when things have finally come together. Wow, you found and your passion. For the first time, well, I found it a couple years ago, but uh, now I can see it as, as a realistic yeah. career choice. Wow, that's so and inspiring. For the first time, yeah, in my life, I am looking on the previous year uh, with, with uh, some A smile. Sadness. Oh. Well, well, sadness that it's passing, because it was such Aww. a good year, but also with, with hope and optimism for for 2017. Well, what does 2017 bring for Brian Crawford? I think 2017 is the year that the River's Edge becomes a profitable business. Yes. And I think it is the year that the River's Edge will will light up Pittsburgh and light up the world. And we've already, this year, exposed Pittsburgh artists and local Pittsburgh music all across the world, everywhere from uh, Russia to Indonesia to Germany. Brazil, Spain, France, all over the world, people have been listening in to local artists right here in Pittsburgh, and we have made that possible. And I think as we grow and as we become stronger as a, as a company, and as we get investors and sponsors involved, we'll be able to use that to, to grow even larger and expose ourselves even further. So, Exposing yourself. That's it. Exposing myself to the world. <laughs> <laughs> passion. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> anyways, yeah, I, I'm excited. I think this year is going to be great. Cool. I'm excited too. Yeah, I think we're uh, we're moving along. We've got more shows on the horizon, and uh, it's, yes. it's going to be lots of fun. Uh, but that's it for me today. It's my first day back. I was. It's always weird coming back on your first day. Yeah. Because it's because like, why? Haven't done it in a while. And oh, I know. It's weird trying to just get back into the the groove of things and the motion of things. Getting your groove back. So getting my groove back. Oh, and one of my New Year's traditions. So we we have multiple traditions. Uh, one is the sauerkraut that I said, the noisemakers, the guns. Uh, another one is Goldschlager, and apparently this is a family tradition. Apparently this is not done. Uh, elsewhere. Not everywhere. I, I didn't know this. Like people, I tell people about. You this pass around the gold schlager. Everyone gets a shot of gold schlager at, uh -huh. at New Year's, and the more gold flakes that are in your shot, that's supposed to represent the more uh, the amount of money that you'll get that year. So if you get more gold flakes, you're going to make more money in. Very the nice. Year. Very literal. So yeah, and that, that's a tradition of mine. I did have a New Year's shot New Year's Eve morning at the Acoustic Brunch. I, what of was it? Was uh, I had my gold schlager. Oh, your gold schlager shot. shot. Uh, on New Year's Eve uh, in the morning. I did not get to have it at midnight. But uh, next year, stay tuned because uh, I'm hoping to do something right here with the River's Edge. That's it for me. That's it for Tara. Thank you, Tara, as You're always. Welcome. Don't forget, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Mike Sasson, he will be right here in this chair. We'll have Alex Clemens, who, uh, big thanks to Alex, who came out on Tuesday night. Tuesday was the uh, first time I hosted an open mic. And it went very well. We had a packed house, standing room only for the entire event. And we had people around the world listening in to the open mic. And uh, we also had over over 600 people who tuned in, over 600 views on Facebook through our Facebook live feed. So thank you very much. I will see you on Wednesday. <laughs>